online are here as well. Today we're going to continue with the book of Acts, and I'm going to be speaking about do you have a spirit of giving? Everyone say giving. Today we're going to look at why we need to have a spirit of giving. You know, people say, you know, you need to give, give, give. And the question is, why do we need to give? And we're going to learn about that in Acts as we've been going through the book of Acts. This is going to be our last week on chapter 20. We're going to go into chapter 21 next. The world tells us to take what we can. That's what the world's philosophy is. Step on people, take what you can, get what's yours. You know, I'm here to get mine. You know, that's what they say. I'm here to get mine. I'm just going to step on whoever so I can climb the corporate ladder, so I can make the most money. I'm here to take, 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 but I'm not really here to give. The world will teach us how to take, how to step on people to get where you want to go. But the Bible tells us to give and meet the needs of others first. I, I knew I wouldn't get a loud amen on that one. The Bible says to give and meet the needs of others first. Yeah. All right, all right, we got a little bit louder, but we're still hurting on that one. You're like, Pastor, you're t stepping on my toes. Well, make them smaller, amen. It's hard sometimes to forget about yourself and your own needs to look at the needs of others. I mean, that's real. It's hard to, but if I have a need, how am I going to meet the needs of others? It's hard to forget about yourself. Well, you know, I want a new car, but I, I can't give to help others because I got to pay this payment on my car. Or I got to uh, pay the rent on my, my, on my apartment or the mortgage on my house and things of that nature. And I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. Those are all good things to have when the Lord blesses you. But when you step outside of the will of God and because you're greedy or because you want to keep up with your neighbors and you start spending more money on people who don't even uh, know about you or like you even and you want to impress them and they're not even looking your way but you're out there buying the latest TV, the latest car, and you're just getting credit on top of credit, and then when it's time to give to the Lord, you're like, uh, I have no money. I can't give. I got I to gotta pay this. Some of us, we work two, three jobs, and we can't even come to church. I, I, I knew that was going to go over like a rat sandwich. Pastor, I got to work. I got to pay my bills, so I, gotta, I can't come to church on Sunday. We'll get there. Amen. But when you act on the kingdom principles, guess what? You're going to receive the kingdom blessings. How many want the kingdom blessings? Come on, somebody. How many want it? Come on, y'all got to wake up. Well, then you got to follow kingdom principles. There's rules in the kingdom. You don't make them up. When you want to make up your own rules, then you become your own king. Create your own universe. And when you do, call me. I want to check it out, see if you messed it up. <laughs> but God created the universe. God created the earth. And he created the rules. He says, these are the principles that you must follow in order to get the blessings of the kingdom. And the blessings of the kingdom are unlimited. They're freely flowing. He says, I got cattle on a thousand hills. I got money. I make my streets out of gold. That's nothing for me. I got everything you need. If you follow my principles in my kingdom, I will bless you so that you can meet the needs of others. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on. See, it's hard because the world will teach you it's about me. It's me time, Pastor. I got to take care of me. Number one, numero uno, me. Me, myself, and I, those three people I got to take care of. But today we're going to learn about Paul and how he was a blessing to others. So let's start right there in Acts chapter 20. Verse 32. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. It says this. So now, brethren. So when he speaks brethren, he's talking to the people of God. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. I want to say inheritance. Among all those who are sanctified. Now, let me break this down for you. 
if you're not close to God, then it's impossible to give according to how God wants you to give. If you're not close to God. You see, you got to be close to God in order to give what God tells you to give. Someone say amen. If you're not close to God, you're not going to be able to follow the principles of God. Now, Paul says, I commend you. Now, I looked up that word commend in the Greek. It means this. To entrust in a very up close and personal way or to deposit. So check that out. To entrust in a very up close and personal way. So when Paul says, I commend you to God, he's saying you need to be up close and personal with God in order to do what God is telling you to do. So my question today for you is, how is your relationship with God today? Are you close to him? Do you have a relationship with him? Do you spend time with him on a daily basis? Do you know him? See, you cannot know God if you only come on Sunday. Amen. You can't know God. It's like if you have a relationship with your children or your wife or your husband, and you say, you know what, just one time a week for an hour and some minutes, and if we go over, I'm out of here because that's t too long, Pastor. Um, but in that little bit of time, that's the only time I get to know God. And you expect to have a close and personal relationship with him like that? And then you want all the promises and blessings of the kingdom? God said it don't work like that. You got to spend time with me. If you want to have a relationship, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, how many know it takes time? How many girlfriends have broken up with their boyfriends because they spent too much time on PlayStation or Xbox? <laughs> Amen. Now I'm preaching, Pastor. Oh, Pastor, he don't spend time with me. He's always playing the video game. Oh, he's always watching sports. He never wants to go out. He never pays me any attention. Amen. How many relationships have been broken because their wives or husbands say, they don't spend time with me. They don't talk with me. We barely see each other. How can you have a relationship built on an hour a week with somebody? It's impossible. You can't have a relationship. You can have, well, I know that person's name, but you don't have an up-close personal relationship. You have to spend time with people. And same way with God. God desires to spend time with his children, with his people. And Sunday morning, just coming for an hour or so is not enough. That's, that's just coming for like the dessert. You got to spend time with him throughout the week so you can get the meat, so you can spend time and get to know who God is. Because in order for God to trust you with his blessings, you need to have an up close and personal relationship with him. It's like the things you have. How many of you will trust a perfect stranger with the keys to your house? You're like, here you go. Some guy off the street, you just pick him. Hey, sir, I live at uh, XYZ address. Here's my keys. I, I trust you 100% that you're not going to rob me. Here you go. <laughs> You'd be a fool to do that. I have yet to see anybody do that. None of you even give me the keys to your house. Amen. <laughs> and I'm trustable. So how can God, and this is earthly things that are here today and gone tomorrow. The house can get on fire today and you don't have a house tomorrow. But God's treasures are eternal. And then you expect God to just give you all the treasures, but you don't even know him. You're a stranger to him. He knows all about you because he's all-knowing, but you don't know all about him. He says, I wrote a book about myself. It's called the Bible. Read it. And you'll learn about me. And then you can ask me questions. And I love to talk. God says, I love to talk with you. I love to spend time with you. Ask me any question you want. We'll get to know each other. And then, once you have that personal relationship with me, 
I can release all the blessings that my kingdom has, and it's unlimited. Just like Jesus took the keys to the kingdom away from the devil. So why? So that he could give us the keys. And what do keys do? What do keys? They open doors. They unlock doors. So if there's keys to the kingdom, that means the doors are locked. Why? Why would God lock the doors? Because he doesn't want certain people getting in, the wrong ones. The ones that don't know him. The ones he don't trust. Because why do you lock your doors? You don't want to get robbed, right? If you didn't believe in that, you wouldn't have a door that has a lock on it. You'd be like, oh, everybody's trustable. Let me just leave my door wide open. They won't come and rob me. Let me announce it to my neighborhood. Hey, guys, I ain't locking my doors no more. See how long you have that TV. Amen. All of a sudden, you see people walking out with stuff, and you're like, that looks like mine. You go home, and your house is clean, clean as it's ever been, because <laughs> there ain't nothing there left. People have locks on doors to keep people out. And Jesus says, I have the keys to the kingdom, and I'll give them to you. But the doors are locked because there's certain people I don't want in there. Because they're going to abuse what I have. So the doors are locked, but I want to give you the key. Just be a good steward of what you have, and I'll release the key. And there's different keys to different levels of blessing. I wish we had time to go into that revelation. But there's many keys. Because he says there's keys with an S to the kingdom. And he wants to release them to you. But you got to know him. How many want to know him today? I got five of you. How many want to know him today? Come on, come on. Y'all, you want the blessings, you got to know him. Paul says that God will build you up. Because he says in Acts 20, 32, he's able to build you up. Now, I looked up the word build in the Greek, and it means this. To build a house. The building up of character. To encourage, to build someone up, helping them to stand strong and sturdy. In order for you to be a giver, you have to have character. Everyone say character. You got to have character. In order for you to be a giver, you have to have character. This will allow you to give without expecting anything in return. Amen. See, that's the key in giving. I don't give a gift so that you can give me back one. How many of you would like to hear that at Christmas? You give the person a gift, and, and then they tell you, where's my gift? <laughs> or you gave them a gift that cost you $100, and, and you got a gift from the dollar store. <laughs> How many of you would tell them off? Hey, man, I spent 100 bucks on you, and you spent a dollar. Well, now $1.25. Amen. <laughs> It ain't the dollar store no more. Inflation. <laughs> it's a dollar twenty-five. Dollar twenty-five. You be that's not how you give. You don't give expecting to get something back. You give because you want to give and then you forget about it. You just release it. I give this to you. And that's the way God is. But He wants us to be the same way. He wants us to give without expecting anything in return. In order to be like that, he's got to work on our character. He's got to build us up because that's not natural for us as people. Our flesh never wants to give. Our flesh always wants to take. That's why Paul says, I got to kill my flesh daily because your flesh is a taker. It'll take everything it can, and it doesn't want to give anything in return. That's why you got to teach and subdue the flesh. See, we're the temple of the Spirit of God. This is where the Spirit of God dwells. We're the house of God. Because build up means to build up the house. See, God wants to build up this house because he dwells in it. Think about that. You're the house that God dwells in. He doesn't dwell in this building. This is not where he wants to live, in a, in a four-brick building, four-wall 
full of brick building. This is not his home. His home is you. And he wants to build up his home. He wants to build you up because that's where he lives. Anyone who lives in a place is always trying to live in the best place they can and make it look as nice as possible. Even if it's in bad conditions, you try to make it look nicer because you want your house to be nice. And God wants his house. And we are the house of God, the temple of the spirit. And he wants to build us up because he dwells in us. Paul says God will give us an inheritance. In that same scripture in chapter 32, it says, I will give you an inheritance. Now check this out. The word inheritance in the Greek means this. The portion God assigns to a person. The gift of God to his chosen people in the present and in the future. Oh, that should make somebody just praise the Lord right there. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Y'all, we're going to get you. The inheritance means he's, because a lot of times we think this. Oh, we serve God and one day in heaven we're going to get our inheritance. And God says, no, that's not how I work. I want to bless you now in the present too. I don't want to just bless you 100 years from now, 50 years from now. I want you to be blessed here on this earth. I have an inheritance for you that's enough for the present and enough for the future. I got an inheritance for you that's going to bless you. But you got to live according to the principles to get the inheritance. You can't get your inheritance unless you live to according to the principles that God puts in his kingdom. The inheritance is yours if you live right. See, God has an inheritance for you now that will be released so that you can be a blessing to others. And if you're a good steward of the earthly blessings, then he can trust you with heavenly blessings. See, you got to be a good steward. And Jesus told a few parables about being a good steward of what you've been given to steward over. Remember the story of the three servants and he gave them the money? If you don't, Google it and find out. Amen. But when those who were good stewards, what happened? They were blessed with what? With more. And the one who was unfaithful what happened to his inheritance? They took it and gave it to who? The one who had the most. He said, you wicked, lazy servant, give me that money. I'm going to give it to the one who has the most. Goes totally opposite of this socialism thinking nowadays. Amen. Saying, oh, oh you take it from the people who, who, who are faithful to God, take their money and give it to the lazy people. I knew I wouldn't get an amen on that one. That's socialism. God says, I don't work under a socialism government. I work under a godly government. And the godly government says, if you're a good steward, I'm going to bless you. And if you're not taking care of what God has given you, he says, I'm going to take it from you and give it to the one who has a lot. You said it ain't fair. Well, that's God. Get to work. And you'll be the one receiving. Amen. <laughs> I, I know this wouldn't go well here. Amen. <laughs> We've been indoctrinated with this socialism doctrine. Take from the rich and give to the poor. Just take it. No. The Bible says the total opposite. If they're not good stewards worth it, why am I going to give it to them? <laughs> oh, man, y'all. You, you can't believe the thinking of the world. You got to believe the thinking of God. Now, do we meet the needs of the poor? Yes, God's telling us. And we're going to see what happens and how we do that. Follow me now. See, when we see a need, we are to meet that need. And ask the Lord to give us a way to meet it. 
See, when we see needs out there, because we're the people of God, we have the inheritance of God. We're supposed to be blessed. And I'm going to get into that in a moment and probably won't get too many amens on that one either, but I'm going to get you there. But when we see a need, we're supposed to meet it. That's what the Word of God says. You see a need, fill it. I've called you to meet the needs of others. That's why I've blessed you. Now we're going to get there. Acts chapter 20, verse 33. We're going to see how it happens in a moment. This is what it says. Acts chapter 20, verse 33. It says, I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparels. This is what Paul's telling the people. Paul says, the, the riches of this world don't have me. I don't covet this stuff. I don't covet the gold. I don't covet the silver. I don't covet it. Do I have it? Yes. Do I covet it? No, there's a difference. You see, I have it, but it doesn't have me. Amen? I know. Come on, come on, come on. We're going to wake up. You see, you can't allow the things of the world to have you, that you do anything to get it. See, God says, I will release it to you. If you're a good steward, man, I'll give you everything, gold, silver, all the things that you want, all the things you need. But guess what? That's not what I work for. I work for my Lord and Savior so I can be a blessing to others. That's why I do what I do. Now, follow me. The word coveted in the Greek means this. What a, truly, what a person truly yearns for. To greatly desire to do or to have something. See, when you covet something, you yearn for it. You desire it. You do anything to have it. Paul says, I don't desire these things. He says, I desire to be in the presence of God and to meet the needs of people. That's what Paul says. That's what the church is here for, to be in the presence of God and to meet the needs of people. Somebody praise the Lord for that. But now we're going to get to the part that we're going to probably step on some more toes. But Paul tells them, I need money to do ministry. But money doesn't own me. See, remember, I've told you many times, salvation is free, but ministry costs. Salvation is free, but ministry costs. So what does Paul start telling them? Let's look at Acts chapter 20, verse 34. Yes, he says, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. Now we're going to start going into this. Paul said, whatever money I needed for ministry, he says, I didn't take it from the church. He says, I went out and I worked with my hands for it. That's good, Pastor Rob. You know, that's a good point. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. I told you y'all going to get upset. Socialist-minded people, they get upset at this kind of preaching here. Amen. Not you guys here. I know, I know. You're just trying to save your voice for a louder amen down the, down the sermon there. They're going to blow up that socialist mindset here. Paul says, I went out and I worked for it. I didn't expect the church to give it to me. I didn't beg people for it. He says, I went out and I worked my hands for myself and my team. He says, I made sure they were taken care of. Now follow me. So what did he do? Paul was an entrepreneur. The Bible tells us in other verses he was a tent maker. He had his own business. Check this out now. I'm telling you, we're, we're, we're going to get there. We're going we're gonna to shake some cages here today. Paul was an entrepreneur. He had his own business. So he could do whatever the Lord wanted him to do, and money wasn't an issue for him. How many would love for money not to be an issue for you? 
then follow kingdom principles that I'm going to teach you here. And money won't be an issue for you. See, money wasn't an issue for Paul. Paul went all over preaching the gospel, establishing churches, giving and meeting needs of the poor. And he says, I never asked for a penny from any of you because I had my own business. I was an entrepreneur. I didn't have to ask my boss time off to go to a women's um, retreat or a men's retreat or a youth event or a church event because why? I was my own boss. I set it up so I could do the ministry. When God called me, I could go and say, okay, yes, God, I ain't got to ask nobody else because God has placed me in an entrepreneurship business, Paul says, that I could just go and say yes to God. If he told me to give to this person, I would give to that person because he blessed me with the finances. I wasn't worried about money because I knew if I followed God's principles, he would bless my business. And God blessed his business, and he was able to be a blessing to others. Now we're going to get there. Because what did I say earlier? A lot of times people say, I can't give, Pastor, because I have no money. Uh Uh-oh, yeah, see? (laughs) Jeremiah says, "Uh uh-oh. He knows that word. He don't know a lot of words, but he knows money. He says, "Uh uh-oh. That's the number one excuse that you hear from people. I have no money. I have no money. I have no money. I have no money. But if the Bible says we are to be blessed, then something is wrong here. If God expects us to meet the needs of others, financially, physically, spiritually, mentally, But in the financial area, how can we meet the needs of others if we're broke? And how can we say God is an awesome God and he blesses us, he's Jehovah Jireh, he provides for us financially if every time we ask and every time God puts it in your spirit to give, you can't. Because I got to pay this bill, I got to pay that bill. We don't have time to get into the reason why you got all these bills because you lived outside your means, but we won't get into that today. But let's follow what, the, what Paul's teaching us here. I believe this with all my heart because God is about to do a new thing in this season that some of us here today, God wants to give you that spirit of entrepreneurship. He wants you to start your own business. Some of you have ideas in your head that you know that could work, but you've been afraid to take the risk to go out there and do it. And then you see somebody else do the same thing. You're like, I thought of that. But you know why? Because it's in the atmosphere. And if you don't grab it, someone else will. Like I shared with you before, I love Shark Tank. I love watching that show. And... I see on there, there was a kid, I think, 8 or 10 years old, started his own business. He's already a millionaire. 10-year-old kid or 8-year-old, he's somewhere in there, I can't remember, but he was young, 8 to 10. He had an idea. His parents helped him put it together. He started the business. He got a deal on Shark Tank, and now he's a millionaire already. And here we are making all types of excuses. And he was an African-American kid, so he was a minority (laughs) on top of it. Because we we love to play that. Well, it's faster, it's because I'm Hispanic, or it's because I'm black, it's because, you know, I'm purple, I got big ears, whatever. We, we, We make excuses all the time. I can't do it. Of course you can't, because you keep speaking it, you can't. God says, speak to those things that are not as though they were. And I believe God wants to raise up the people of God to start their own business and to be a blessing to others. How awesome will it be that you could start a business and then you can start hiring people who are in need? But that ain't going to happen by just laying on the couch eating Doritos, playing video games all day. It's going to take hard work. But some of us, we don't want hard work. (laughs) 
We, we barely just wake up to go to the job that we work at. As soon as that clock, man, we're looking at the clock. We get out at 5 o'clock, 4.59, 29 seconds, 30 seconds. As soon as it's 5 o'clock, we gone. <laughs> we're like the Flintstones. You just see a little puff of smoke behind you, and your legs are gone, and whoo. You're out of there. You hear the tires screeching. <laughs> gone. <laughs> But in order to start a business, it's hard work. I'm here to tell you, I, I've, I've done it and I'm currently in it. You know, for those of you who don't know, we have a mental health agency that we started from scratch. And we're meeting the needs of others, especially in the mental health area. Right now we have roughly about 40 some employees that we've hired. And, and gave them financial blessings. They do the work and they earn it, but they would have never have received it if we never went out and started it. Because as you know, I don't get a salary from here from the church. We're not at that point yet. So I'm like Paul. And I've done it many times, different ways, and started different things. And said, God, bless this. Bless this. And so God connects me with people, and I have partners. And we started this business. And we're one of the very few mental health agencies in the state of Illinois that's minority-owned. Somebody praise the Lord for that. My partners, you know, they're women, African-American, and I'm Hispanic, and we've come together. And we started this. And we're on year three now. And it was a lot of hard work. It didn't come easy. It didn't come easy. But guess what? It's now providing others financial blessings, and it's providing us financial blessings. And in the future, it's going to provide financial blessings as an inheritance. But it's not easy. So I'm speaking not from just you know, out of the sky. I'm not speaking from inexperience. I'm speaking from experience that I know that God is calling some of you to start your own business. You might have to work for, for your boss for a while so you can get it up and running. And when you come home, you're going to have to put some hours in to make it happen because it's just not going to happen. I guarantee you it doesn't do it. It doesn't work like that. You just have an idea, then poof, all of a sudden you have a business. It's work. But God is going to breathe into it. I'm speaking life into your idea right now. God will breathe into it, and it will grow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and it will provide for the needs of your family. It will provide for others to get jobs, that you'll be able to hire people, say, hey, you're in need. You know how to do this. I'm going to hire you, and you're going to be part of my company, and you're going to work for me, and I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to show you the love of Jesus Christ. See, he wants us to start a business, and he wants to bless it so that you can do the ministry that he's called you to do without worrying, will there be money to live on? Because like I said, that's the number one reason why people don't want to give. I, I don't have it. How can I give? I got to pay rent, gas, light, boom, boom, boom. God wants you to be blessed He's telling us he never wants us begging. He never wants us suffering. That's not the plan of God. That's the plan of the enemy. But in order to access the blessings, we got to follow the principles. You can't get the blessings. You can't get the keys unless you're trustworthy. How do you become trustworthy? You know God. How do you know God? You got to spend time with him. You want God to bless your business? Then you need to spend time with God. <laughs> See how it all goes back right there. You, you cannot just spend God, time with God on Sundays. You got to spend time with God every day. Just like you find time to eat, 
You know, people say, I, I don't have time to pray. It just goes by me. I don't have enough hours in the day. Well, somehow you find time to eat. Sometime, somehow you find time to use the bathroom. <laughs> you find time for what you want to do and what's important to you. You need to find time for God so God can breathe into your life. So as I speak this over your life, those of you who want to be an entrepreneur and start your own business, spend time with God, and God will breathe into it, and it will grow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you receive it, say amen. amen. Now look at Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to what? To give than to what? Than to receive. Now Paul says he's been laboring to support the weak. Now the word laboring in the Greek means this, to work with bodily and mental effort. To work until you're worn out, depleted, and exhausted. That's what laboring means. That you work so hard for the kingdom of God that you're exhausted. Because not only did you put the, your body into it, you put your mind into it as well. He says, man, I worked so hard to meet the needs of the weak. The reason Paul worked so hard was that so that he could give to those in need financially, spiritually, and give them mental support. That's why he worked so hard. That's why he worked so hard. And when you work hard in the things that God told you to work in, then he will meet your needs. He'll meet your needs. He will take care of you. When you take care of the needs of others, he will take care of you. I mean, God has blessed my family tremendously. I'm a, a, a shining example of what God can do. What God can do if you work hard. I mean, we have an, a beautiful house. We have beautiful cars. We have beautiful children. We have, we have everything that we could ever want in life. God has blessed us. God has blessed us. Why? Because we've been faithful to God. We work with our hands to bless the people of God. And whenever there's a need, God has blessed us tremendously so that we can say, here, we'll meet that need, whether it's financially. If they need mental support, guess what? Now God gave us an opportunity to open up a mental health agency. So now we can meet their need mentally. Now, spiritually, here we are. We're here every day after church, before church, throughout the week, meeting the needs spiritually of others, doing deliverance, doing healing sessions, praying, working online, so that we can meet the needs of others spiritually. Why? Because God has told us it's better to give than to receive. And one thing you'll find out, you can never outgive God. If you're in need, then you need to start giving. You'll be like, whoa, that don't even make sense. That's the totally opposite. How can I give if I'm in need? Because you live by the kingdom principles and God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. You got to follow the principles of God. And when you follow principles of God, Blessings of God are connected. That's why Paul quotes Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now, how can we be examples of a God who blesses his people if we're always complaining about how much we are in need? Amen? Oh, I don't have enough money to pay rent. I don't have enough money to pay my gas. I got to work five jobs to get this done. I got to, how can we who say we serve a God of riches and a God that blesses and a God that will flow his, his financial blessings on us and we're poor, suffering, 
That's not the plan of God for his children. His plan is for you to be blessed. How can you be suffering mentally and hurt and, and, and then you want to help others? God says that today he wants to heal you. He wants to heal you from that anxiety. He wants to heal you from that depression. He wants to heal you from the pain in your mind so that you can go out and reach out others. See, you got to be the example. You got to be the example that God is a God of blessing. See, when people see our family, they see the blessings. We represent the kingdom of God well. Because we follow the principles. Not that we're any more special than anybody else. God will do it for you. If he did it for us, he'll do it for you. You just got to follow the plan of God. And we labored. We labored. We worked hard. My wife has two master's degrees. She went to school. She, she worked hard. How I many you know, it's hard to get a, even one master's degree. She got two master's degrees. She worked hard. I went to school, got my bachelor's degree. I went out and I learned the businesses. I studied. And I opened the doors that God told me to open. And I put in hours and I learned things that I never knew before. Why? So that one day I could open up a church and not expect and not need the church to give me any money so that I can bless the church. So that I don't cripple the church. So that it can't meet the needs. We would never have this facility if I said, well, pay me. I need money. See, I don't need it. Do we still bless people? Yes. But I don't need it. Because God has blessed me and my family because we follow kingdom principles. And he'll do the same for you. See, this ministry support it because we have people who are blessed that give. But we, we need to get all to the point where we don't even think about it anymore. And if there's a need, we just say, boom, here it is. Doesn't even bother me. I don't even have to think about it. If there's a need in my church, there's a need that I see around me and God is tugging my heart to give, here's $1,000. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Lord, take me home, Jesus, right now. <laughs> Before they cash that check. Yes, don't even think about it. Because God will bless you in that way. I'm going to ask the worship team, come up. We're, we're going to pray. We're going to break off some chains today of poverty poverty mindset. We're going to break off some mental chains in our minds because God wants us blessed. He wants us to have a spirit of giving. So let's all stand. Come on. It's blessed more to give than to receive. And who do we give to? We give to those who are in need. We give to those who are weak. But if we're weak ourselves, how can we give? So we need to be strong. And God says, when you're weak, he's strong. And he will provide for you. He'll make a way where it seems like there is no way. He'll give you the idea. He'll give you the ability to open up your own business. He'll give you favor in the job that you have. Because maybe he, he's not calling you to open your business, but he'll give you favor in the job you have that you can climb up and receive raises so that you can be a blessing. But you can't be a blessing and you can't get the favor of God unless you follow the principles of God. You've got to follow the principles so you can be blessed, so you can be a giver, that you never think about it twice. You see a need whether it's here at the church or wherever the Lord takes you, and something nudges in your spirit, and you say, you feel like, I need to give to that person something, but you can't because of your financial condition or your mental state. But today, God wants to change all of that. He wants to change all of that today. 
He wants to set you free. That spirit of poverty, he wants to remove it out of your life. Doesn't matter your age. You just got to be obedient to the kingdom of God. Obedient to the word of God. And he never fails. God never fails. Close your eyes with me. Those of you online, begin to pray as well. I'm going to pray for you in a moment. I'm going to pray for you in a moment online. There's a miracle in the house today. There's a miracle in the house today. There's millionaires in the house today. There's millionaires in the house today. You just have to go out and grab it. It's yours. Because God wants to use you to meet the needs of others. And so he'll create millionaires, billionaires, so that he could funnel it through you to get to them. And as he's funneling it through you, you get blessed too. You get blessed too. You'll be blessed beyond your wildest imaginations when you're faithful to the Lord, when you're faithful to God. God is all about blessings. He's a God of blessings. He's a God of blessings. If you're online and you say, Pastor, I want to start a business. I got an idea. And I want God to breathe in it. I want you to type in the word business online, and I'm going to pray with you. Just type in that word business. Before we do deliverance, I want to pray for those who maybe have a business or want to start a business. That God will breathe into it. And that as long as you follow the principles of God, He will bless it. He will multiply it. He'll bring you the customers or whatever it is that you need so that you can be a blessing to others. He will, he will funnel finances through your business so that you can bless others. You can bless the ministry. You can meet the needs of the weak, as Paul says. I work with my hands. I started a business so I could be a blessing to others. I can go where the Lord sends me. I don't have to ask. I just do and follow the Lord. If you're here today, before we pray for deliverance or anything else, I want to pray for the business people. You want to start a business or you have a business already and you want God to breathe on it because you're ready to follow the principles of God in business. If that's you here today, no matter your age, you can be a young person, you can be a adult, a senior, it's never too late, it's never too early to start. Colonel Sanders started his Kentucky Fried Chicken when he was in his 70s. And we all know of KFC. He was a 70-year-old man and started that business. But he loved God. He was faithful to church. And God blessed his business. God wants to bless you the same way. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Rob, I have a business. I want to start a business. I want God to breathe in it. Get up out of your seat and come right here because I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for the rest of you in a moment. There's going to be freedom, deliverance, because there's miracles in the house. There's miracles in the house.
Come on, come on. There's a spirit of entrepreneurship being released right here, right now. A spirit of entrepreneurship.
release it right now, God. I want you to receive it right now. I want you to claim your business. Whatever it is that you're thinking of, I want you to say the name. If you have a name of your business, say the name. Say, God bless whatever it is. The name of your business or the idea you have if you don't have a name yet. God bless it. Say it right now. God bless this so I can be a blessing to others. So I can meet the needs of the kingdom. You're going to speak it into the atmosphere. You're going to speak it into life.
Like you try to get up and you keep getting pushed down. You try to move forward and you keep getting pushed back. The enemy has a spirit of suppression on you. You've been suppressed. Suppressed. Rejected. Everywhere you go, there's rejection. People turn on you. It seems like everything's going great, and then they turn on you. And they push you away, they reject you. You're a mighty man of God. You're a mighty 
of the Spirit is coming right now. Let the Holy Spirit move right now. Just release yourself. Release yourself to the Holy Spirit. He's going to do a work in you right now. He's going to do a work in you right now, the Holy Spirit. There's a miracle in your house right now. Here it is. That's Him. That's the Holy Spirit now. That's the Holy Spirit. Just let yourself go. He's going to fill you up. Just let yourself go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Fire. 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 Suppressive spirit. 
abide in her. We have chosen to abide in her, Father God. She is a chosen vessel by you, Lord, to abide the gifts of the Lord. Because she has a giving heart. She has a giving heart, God. Her heart is to give. And I've released this giving heart, Father. And I pray, Lord, give her what she needs. Give her what she needs, Father God. Don't allow the enemy to stop you. Don't allow the enemy to prevent you from what is in your heart to do. What the Lord is saying. Because he's going to open up doors. Business. Business doors. He's going to open them up so that you can provide not only for your family but for the needs of
today the theft stops. The thief is caught. The thief is in prison. The thief is gone. The thief is gone. No longer will you lose out. No longer would it be not enough. No longer will it be stolen. Your hands work for the kingdom of God. can bless others. But Lord, I pray that you take care of her. Take care of her family right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Release that blessing upon her. Release the blessing upon her right now, God. Release the blessing upon her right now. Right now. Jesus, Jesus, we release blessings Blessings, 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 blessings. We speak blessings, God. We speak blessings, 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 God. Texas. Heal his body. Heal his body, his family, every one of them, Father God. Bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. God has come to set the captives free, and he's come to release and bring out the business people to work in the kingdom of God. So I pray that you begin to work in the kingdom of God with your business, with your entrepreneurship. And for those who receive deliverance, continue coming, continue receiving from the Lord. You cannot stop because if you stop, it's going to hurt you. You need to continue being connected to the people of God. Tonight we'll be here at 5 o'clock. Bring some food to celebrate. Um, we'll have a good time and fellowship. We love you guys. May the Lord keep you safe. May the Lord bless you. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you.